to be speaking on loco regional treatment for recurrent HCC. Hepatocellular carcinoma is an aggressive disease with an overall five-year survival of less than 20% and an incidence of recurrence as high as 88%. There is limited data on staging systems and treatment algorithms for recurrent HCC. We usually apply the primary HCC management guidelines to recurrent HCC patients, so this may not be appropriate because the recurrent lesions may have a different tumor biology. Recurrence has been described in the context of primary treatment of HCC with curative intent like resection, transplantation, and ablation. Depending upon the primary treatment used for HCC, the patterns of recurrence may be different, and most of these have been studied after curative resection. The reported recurrence rate after resection is 45.5 to 60%, after liver transplantation is 10 to 15%, and after ablation is 4 to 21%. Intrahepatic recurrences are most common and occur within the first or second year of the index surgery or ablation. Local intrahepatic recurrence is defined as the appearance of a new lesion with radiological features of HCC within 2 cm of the surgical or ablation margin. Other new intrahepatic HCC lesions are identified as distant recurrence and after primary hepatic resection, the liver volume is small and liver functional reserve is reduced. Uh, in addition to this, there are other challenges like the location and site of the recurrence, the severity of cirrhosis, and portal hypertension. The risk factors for recurrence are multinodularity, size more than 5 cm, macroscopic or microscopic vascular invasion, high preoperative AFP levels, presence of cirrhosis, and advanced BCLC stage. The treatment for recurrent HCC should be individualized. It will depend upon the location of tumor, extent of recurrence, volume of remnant liver, and the function of remnant liver. So uh, this is the BCLC staging system uh, that we fall back upon for uh, the management of primary HCC, primary tumor, but for recurrences also, the, uh, the ablation and the taste are used for lesion size uh, similar to what we use for the primary tumors. So the, uh, there's a long list of ablative therapies. Uh, the most commonly used thermal ablations are radiofrequency ablation and microwave ablation. Uh, why we are switching to microwave ablation is we achieve high intratumoral temperature, larger tumor ablation volume, faster ablation time, improved convection profile, and lower risk of heat sink effect which means, uh, as you can see in these images, if there is a tumor close to a flowing blood vessel, uh, they, the flowing blood vessel can take away the heat of the ablation, but if we use microwave ablation, this heat sink is much less, and you can achieve a large area of ablation as seen in the CT scan images. So this, uh, uh, the uh, literature shows that uh, actually there is no definite uh, overall survival advantage of microwave over RFA. However, it outperforms RFA in terms of local recurrence for larger size tumor. Uh, this is the table to show the different ablation modalities. And we can see here that cryo and IRE uh, are the ones in which the tumors adjacent to critical structures can be treated because they do not cause damage to the connective tissue network. So the in these two thermal ablation techniques, uh, apoptosis is the mechanism of cell death. IRE is non-thermal and has to be done under general anesthesia, uh, can cause arrhythmias because of the high voltage that we deliver with IRE. Endovascular therapies, there's a range of them, but the one which is used primarily for recurrent HCC is uh, the uh, conventional transarterial chemoembolization. So showing you some case scenarios, this is uh, number one is the post-resection recurrence so this was a 61-year-old female with CHC with HCC and uh, had undergone a resection for the tumor in the right lobe of liver. So these are the T2 haste and diffusion-weighted images in the circle. You can see the uh, recurrent tumor, uh, which is hyper-intense and shows diffusion restriction. The dynamic CMAR uh, shows the uh, arterial enhancement of this uh, recurrent tumor. And in this patient, this was treated with a taste and post-taste image shows a good uptake within the uh, recurrent tumor. 
Uh, now, on follow-up, this patient developed a small arterial phase hyperenhancing region in the left lobe. However, there is no washout seen. So, we kept this uh, patient on follow-up. So, subsequent follow-up shows a mild increase in size. Still, uh, there is no washout. It is less than one centimeter. And a still later uh, follow-up shows that there is appearance of uh, washout here. In the uh, lesion, it is hypervascular. The right lobe lesion treated lesion looks good. So at this point of time, radiofrequency ablation of the tumor was done along with the uh, transarterial chemoembolization. The first image shows the ablated area and the last shows the deposition of lipidol around the lesion. So after a six year follow-up, uh, presently a scan was done for this patient and uh, there is uh, no residual lesion and uh, uh, whatsoever, neither in the right lobe nor in the uh, left lobe of the liver. So uh, this is another scenario. This is a post-transplant recurrence. Uh, this was a 67-year-old male with CHC with hepatocellular carcinoma, had a liver transplant in 2008 uh, due to HCC, had a recurrence in 2014, RFA was done outside. So these images came to us for follow-up in March 2020, and uh, the treated lesion looks good. There is a lung nodule in the right middle lobe. Uh, this was taken up uh, for surgical resection. Uh, subsequent follow-up shows that uh, there is no new liver lesion. Treated lesion show no enhancement and no new lung lesion. Six months later, another follow-up shows, uh, this orange arrow shows that there is a hyper enhancing area in the right lobe adjacent to the treated area. And it was close to the liver capsule, close to the parietal wall. So this was treated with cryoablation. And the image on the right shows, orange arrow shows, a good ablated uh, zone after the therapy. Uh, subsequent follow-up, there's a new lesion which appeared adjacent to the previously treated lesion. This was in within the depth of the parenchyma. So this was treated with microwave ablation. Uh, subsequent follow-up, three years follow-up, The you can see the good ablation status, but uh, extrahepatic disease has appeared as a subcranial lymph node, adrenal lesion on the left side, and there's an additional lesion which has recurred in the uh, quadrate lobe. So now the patient was shifted to systemic therapy. Another scenario, post-transplant recurrence. Uh, this was a 58-year-old male post uh, live donor transplant, and you can see that this is a hyperenhancing region which has appeared close to the right branch of portal vein. And in this patient, because we wanted uh, less collateral damage, we used CT guide IRE, we placed four probes, delivered the energy, and we what we get is a large ablation zone along with the preservation of the vascular structure that is the right portal vein. Uh, the last scenario, post-ablation recurrence. So this is a patient, 72-year-old female with AIH with HCC. You can see this hypervascular region with washout with a subtle capsule. And uh, microwave ablation was done under ultrasound guidance. You can see the evolving uh, air bubbles within the tumor. And uh, follow-up, uh, subsequently the patient developed a recurrence, local recurrence. This is uh, local recurrences, post-ablation are typically irregular and nodular with vague margins. So you can see, appreciate the washout in the delayed phase. So uh, this patient could have undergone a repeat microwave, but we chose to do uh, the uh, conventional taste in this patient. You can see the selective uh, vascular runs and uh, the angio CT showing how the distribution of contrast occurs around the uh, lesion, treated lesion. And post-lipidol deposition, these orange arrows show the lipidol deposition in the nodularity, there was uh, the recurrence, the local recurrence around the lesion. It has well taken up the, uh, the lipidol and the drug. So looking at some literature, uh, this is a retrospective study of patients at nine centers who had undergone hepatic resection as the initial curative treatment for HCC. Uh, and now uh, there were like 307 resections and 540 RFAs. So uh, the... Hepatic resection was associated with longer recurrence-free survival, but not overall survival. And the median overall survival was uh, similar and not significantly different when we compare hepatic resection and RFA. Another multi-center retrospective study of patients who had undergone hepatic resection as initial curative treatment for HCC 
underwent hepatic resections and RFAs. So uh, comparing this, the one, three, and five-year overall survival and progression-free survival were similar in the RF group and the repeat resection group. RFA was superior as lesser complication rates and shorter hospital stay. Uh, but the overall survival was better in the, than the repeat resection group among those patients who had two to three recurrent tumor nodules. Another retrospective study of 126 patients who had undergone hepatic resection as initial curative treatment for HCC. Uh, so these were subcapsular lesions, so there was a risk of incomplete ablation and high incidence of complications. However, the results showed that when we compare RFA versus hepatic resection, uh, the recurrence-free survival and the overall survival rates were not significantly different. Uh, there was no significant difference in the incidence of severe complications. So both uh, RFA and resection were effective and safe. Uh, then this is a systematic review of treatment strategy for recurrent HCC. Uh, patients had undergone hepatic resection as initial curative treatment for HCC. So this compared salvage liver transplantation versus curative local regional therapy. So no difference between the salvage liver transplant and local regional therapy regarding the one and three year survival rates, but the five year survival rates and the uh, disease free survival rates were better when liver transplant was taken into consideration. This is an anecdotal report of uh, the recurrences being treated in the uh, transplant uh, liver with microwave ablation. And they found that microwave ablation works well in this situation, the average survival time was 17.3 months. Uh, now, uh, an other meta-analysis which uh, looked at uh, the uh, the uh, RFA versus TACE. So these were patients who had undergone either hepatic resection, RFA, or transplantation as initial curative treatment for HCC. Uh, comparing RFA and uh, TACE, it was found that uh, the patients who had underwent RFA had significantly higher overall survival. RFA patients had higher rate of complete response. The major complications were consistent between the two groups. So a favorable situation for RFA. Another single center retrospective study of patients who had undergone RFA as initial curative treatment for HCC. So for these recurrent tumors, RFA and TACE were compared. Complete response rate in the RFA group was uh, higher. The progression-free time was also longer in the RFA group than the TACE group, and the one-year and three-year cumulative overall survival rate, uh, though slightly different in the two groups, was not statistically significant. So RFA was recommended as the first treatment of choice for patients with post-RFA intrahepatic recurrence. So to conclude, treatment of recurrent HCC needs to be individualized. RFA or microwave ablation is the local regional treatment of choice for patients with intrahepatic recurrence. Conventional taste is indicated for recurrences more than 3 cm in size. This could be done either alone or in combination with ablation. There is no one-size-fits-all concept. A multidisciplinary, tailored approach is required. Thank you very much for your patient hearing.